All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the long awaited for Pulsar LT for the 2019 plus T1 Silverado. That's the new body style with the four cylinder 2.7 liter turbo. It is the uh, first thing we've really had uh, to, you know, program, and it doesn't really even program, but it's not the same thing as a pedal commander, although it does have some features, but the pedal commander is a, uh, you know, a singular function device where the Pulsar has a menu of functions that I think you're going to love. Stick around. Let's talk about it. This is Monster Tech, and this is the Pulsar LT 2.7 liter turbo, you know, review. So we're going to talk about the menu items, what's available, what you can do. I've had it installed in the truck now for about 1,400 miles. I'm on the beta test program um, with, uh, with Pulsar, the, the company that makes Pulsar. So I'm providing feedback. They're providing updates. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, and... You know, I got into it for, you know, zero dollars, which is great. Uh, when this thing gets released, it's going to be four to five hundred dollars. It's going to be a little more than your pedal commander is going to be. But um, I think you're going to like the menu. So I'm going to flip this around and we're going to get talking about the menu. The nice thing about it is it's completely integrated into the truck. So the menu is through the speedometer and the um, cruise control controls. So it's not a separate box. You stick to your dash. There is nothing, you know, external in the truck. You would not think anything of it. Um, you just can't see it. You can see it when you open the hood, but you just can't see anything in the truck. It looks completely stock, and that's what I like. So I'm going to flip this around. We're going to get started. All right, guys, just a disclaimer real quick. This is a 2021 Silverado Custom, and I think I say it in all my videos, but I've got stuff here that doesn't belong. You can see how I did all this in other videos. You know, I've got the uh, leather stitch dash, so on and so forth. I've got the High Country um, instrument cluster that I ordered from Whams, uh, which is uh, white audio media. You know, I'll put the description in the link below. Uh, back ordered right now. I don't think you can get it due to the computer chips. All right, we're going to get started. So first things first, it does not work when your cruise control is on. You can see I just turned it off, turned it on. You have to make sure this is turned off. Once that's turned off to get into the main menu, you have to shut the truck off. So we're going to shut the truck completely off, and we're going to turn it back to the run position without starting it. Now, how you access the menu is pretty simple. You just hold the, the cancel button for the uh, cruise control. Just hold it until the speedometer slings up to 140 miles an hour. There we go. Let go. It'll come back down into menu position number one, also known as 10 miles an hour. This menu is for TPMS. This is where you can go in and change the factory settings on the TPMS for the truck. Um, so for instance, if your truck pings you when your tire pressure is below 40, you can change that to say, hey, I don't want to know until the tire pressure is below 45 or 50. This comes in handy for the guys that are running different size tires. Um, they're running different PSIs for their tires or they're living at different altitudes, so on and so forth. So it's really nice. It keeps the dummy light off the dash unless you need it. Then you go into the next menu by using the up and down switch here. So you hit resume plus, it goes to menu number two. Menu number two is tire size. So if you're going to change to a 35 or 37 inch tire, you can let me turn this off here. You can change that in the truck, subsequently changing the miles per hour on the uh, speedometer. So your speedometer reads correctly. So that is absolute necessity when you're changing your tire size. As you can see, if you're thinking about the pedal commander, you might want to wait for the Pulsar if you're going to be using these other, you know, functions because the Pulsar is a multi-function unit and the pedal commander is only a single. Um, all right, we're going to go to the next one here. Uh, number three, which is 30 miles an hour, is axle ratio. 
Uh, you're thinking, why are we going to do axle ratio? Well, if you're going to put a big lift kit on your truck and you're going to run 35, 37, 40 inch tires, or you're going to be that guy that's going to run 44 inch super swampers or whatever the case may be, you may need to regear your truck. Why do you need to regear your truck? Well, you regear your truck because it takes less umph to move those tires. Less umph requires less fuel. You get your, you know, you're getting all your cruising speeds back. It's easier to move your truck along if you re-gear to a higher gear ratio um, when you have bigger tires. Some guys, you know, I'm not here to, to to argue the fact. It's just the way it is. I've built, you know, custom Jeeps and and when you re-gear, you need to do things um, to make it work correctly. But when you re-gear this truck, you change the settings in here. I'm not sure what it's linked to. It could be linked to shift points or how the transmission acts from a stop or whatever the case may be. But the truck needs to know what the axle ratio is. So that's how you can change it in here. And then you go left and right. You can move things around and, and so on and so forth. Uh, menu number four is clearing DTCs. So if you have a cold air intake, but you don't have it programmed, which this truck has a cold air intake, it doesn't have it programmed. I do get a check engine light every now and again um, for that. And uh, all I have to do is, you know, the next time I'm stopped, I hit it to menu item number four and I hit the cancel button to say, hey, reset it. And it goes through it. It resets all the DTC codes and it gets rid of my check engine light. Super, super cool feature. I also carry an OBD2 uh, reader in my glove box for that reason, um, but it happens probably once every couple of thousand miles. As you can see, this is a 2021. I've got 18,131 miles on it, and I bought it new. Um, next menu item we're going to come up to is uh, auto start and stop feature. So this is where you can turn that function off. Um, so, you know, my truck doesn't start and stop automatically now. I turn that function off and I love it. All right, so now that's finished. So how do you get out of here? Well, you just, um, you just start the truck. Start the truck. And uh, turn on our cruise control. And it should flip back. I am incorrect here. So we just hit our button. There we go. All right, now we're going to start the truck back up. So the last part about the Pulsar LT is that it allows us to augment the pedal response. So what do I mean by that? Well, like I was telling you before, it's kind of similar to the pedal commander. You can uh, change the pedal response or augment the pedal power or basically you're telling the truck to do something different at the amount of pedal pressure. So for instance, uh, we start at zero. Zero is nothing. Zero is absolutely no difference. Um, if the pedal's too responsive for you and what you're doing, or you know, you got a kid driving or your wife's driving the truck or you know, whatever the case may be, if you go up to number one, it is going to let you augment the pedal to be 15% less responsive than factory. Yes, 15% less responsive. So you have to push the pedal more to get the same of what you get from the factory. Okay, so 15% less responsive. If you go to 20, it's 15% over. 30 is 38% over. 40 is 48% over, and 50 is 55% over. Now, I have tried this all, and I like to sit right here at 20. That's perfect for me, and I'll tell you why in a second. I'm going to flip this back around. We're going to talk a little bit more about this and uh, give you my thoughts. 
take these off because there's a glare. So what do I think? I think it's a great unit. You know, I haven't used the tire pressure. I haven't used the axle ratio. I haven't used the TPMS. Those are things that I'm not interested in right now. Um, I may use them in the future, but they're there if I need them. Um, I have used clear the DTC codes. It is super convenient. Like I said, if you're somebody like me who's got a cold air intake on there, it's gonna throw a code every now and then. And I know you guys are like, why do you put a cold air take, intake onto a truck when you can't reprogram it? You're right. I liked the, you know, I feel I got a little bit better gas mileage with it. Um, it's, you know, you know, negatable, you know, whatever. But the um, longevity of the filters, it, it makes me happy. So the auto start and stop feature I absolutely use. Um, I hate when the truck shuts off. It is not about a starter issue for me. I don't care about any of that. I, you know, it may last longer, it may not last longer, you know, whatever the case may be. I just don't like when I'm starting the truck up at a stoplight. I feel like the truck lurches. I don't like it. Um, in, in my history in automotive tells me you shouldn't start a truck and slam on the gas to go. But whatever, to, you know, engineers get paid more than I do to, to, you know, do these sorts of things. So whatever the case may be. Um, I told you that I like to run it at 20% power or the, the 20 number, which is 15% over stock. That is perfect for me. That is the reason I really like this module. It doesn't increase power. You're not adding power to the truck. You're changing the response of the pedal, which gives you the feeling of adding power. Uh, you know, we pull a pretty heavy boat. Um, most of the menu items one through five on the initial menu, you have to do when the truck shut off and the cruise control is turned off. The menu for the augmenter for the pedal response can be changed on the fly. So while you're driving, which is super cool. Um, so, you know, if I need a little bit more oomph, you know, out of my pedal or I want a little bit more pedal response, you know, like when I'm pulling my boat down the road, I can just flip up the, um, the resume plus button, add a little bit of pedal response and get more out of that pedal. Um, you know, it's just, it's just driving by, you know, feeling really. Um, I like it. Some people complain about it, you know, whatever the case may be. So is there anything that can really be improved on here? I'm sure there is. I haven't found anything. I'm pleased with what this is. Um, I am excited in the future for a real programmer. You know, I had a, a Diablo programmer for my old Tahoe in Silverados and whatnot. And, it, you know, the truck ran better. There was more power, so on and so forth. The, there is so much potential in the turbo on these trucks. And I understand why GM kind of dumbed it down. And there's plenty of power in this truck as it is. <laughs> I am not at all disappointed in my decision to buy a 2.7 liter turbo. I've had the GM V8s. I have been bitten by the lifter issues and I will probably never own another GM V8 as long as I live. Um, I would like to try the three liter diesel. That would be cool. But this 2.7 liter turbo, it will always remain a viable option for me when I trade this truck off. Um, as you know, I, I put a lot of miles on this thing. It's about seven months old. I've got 18,000 miles on it. I drive it two and a half, three hours a day. So, you know, I, I love the truck. But I do know that there's a lot of potential in this truck. And when they bring a programmer out, um, it's going to be a game changer. You know, there's reasons why GM does what they do. They're protecting their product. They're protecting their claims for you know, manufacturer warranty defects, but they're also competing with other power packages. So you probably can't bring out a 450 horsepower, you know, 2.7 liter turbo four cylinder into a market where you're also trying to market a 450 horsepower 6.2 liter V8. You know, that'd be kind of funny, but I guarantee you that this engine can pull that horsepower off. You know, I guarantee you that they can get quite a bit more pounds of boost out of this dual volute turbo that they've got put in here. 
So, you know, I'm looking forward to the future. So, I don't know. It's your choice. The Pulsar LT is a big win for me. I can't wait for it to be finalized. I can't wait for it to hit the shelves for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. Um, and like always, you know, subscribe to the channel, share us, you know, like it and smash the bell so you get an update every time I upload this, uh, the new video to YouTube. Um, I don't have any sponsors here. I don't get paid to do this. This is really just for you guys. Um, so yeah, until next time, I'm Matt and this is Monster Tech and this is me making my custom just a little bit more custom. See you guys soon.